Hey, I'm Red, and this is my Panels and Operators pack. Now I know you didn't click on this video to have your time wasted. You either click to get a quick showcase or click to get a quick tutorial. I get it. So I'm hoping to provide just that. On screen already is a showcase of the possible panels you can easily make yourself with this pack, and coming up is how to do it. And below, I'll post the timestamps to skip ahead to a specific part if you want to. Now real quick before we get started, I just want to get this important part out of the way first. Uh, while the pack is completely free, if you like what you see, if you appreciate the hard, uh, the months of hard work that went into making it, any donation amount made to the PayPal link in the description uh, will not only be greatly appreciated, but it'll help me make more content like this in the future. If you can't make a donation, trust me, I totally understand. It's no big deal. It's a major reason why I made the pack free in the first place. So even if you download the park, rip the files, unsubscribe to free, unsubscribe to free up hard drive room, I totally get it. Uh, but if you'd like to still give back and help support me, the best possible thing you can do is thumbs up or up this pack wherever you're downloading it. Uh, it really helps other people uh, discover and enjoy the pack as well. All right, self-promotion over for good, I promise. Uh, let's jump into it. So if you haven't already, uh, you need to open up the park from the subscription or the download or whatever in your editor and go ahead and extract it. Um, I'm just going to extract it to, I don't know, demo park. Cool, yes. And it'll extract it. Then you're gonna open up your parks file in your com folder for the game. And I think we're still waiting for this to export. Yeah, I'll come back when it's done. All right, looks like it's done. Um, so you're gonna open up the parks file like I mentioned. You're gonna find the export, which I just named demo park in this instance. And within the scenery uh, folder, you're gonna find this folder. And this is the pack, this has everything in it. You're gonna take this folder and copy it into your park. Uh, for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just gonna leave it here and use this demo park as my uh, demonstration. So the first section we're gonna go over is how to make a custom main panel of your own for your ride. Uh, and keep in mind, this video was made for release. Uh, so things might look slightly different if updates come out. Oh, and uh, by the way, if you're uh, more of a reading learner, uh, or if you have questions, uh, there is a README in the package here. If you scroll down, it's a little HTML file. If you double click that, it'll open up in your browser. Looks like this. Um, and it's got like how to use best practices, um, known issues, uh, et cetera, et cetera. How to like clean up the pack if you want to make it a little bit smaller, if you want to like distribute it, uh, and a couple rules on distributing. I promise I don't get to into the legalese there. All right, close that for now. So the first thing we're gonna do is try to make a main panel, something like this. Uh, so the first thing you're gonna do is make sure, before you even touch any of the panels, you're gonna make sure that your ride is clearly labeled. And by that, I mean, just make sure that all your sections are named like station and this is the transfer track. Um, if you plan to do anything with the actual transfer table itself, like attaching objects and whatnot, you want to make sure that the special track itself has a name. I just named it transfer table in this case. Uh, breaks, you know, so on and so forth. Just make sure it's labeled because that's going to be important later. Uh, once you're done with your coaster, also you, you don't really want to start doing this until your coaster is completely done because if you start like moving track and whatnot, uh, it's going to be really tedious to move your panels with it, if, if that makes sense. So you're going to freeze your track. Next, uh, you're going to find a reference, uh, it, preferably if you could find a reference photo of the panel you're trying to replicate, uh, that'd be super helpful. You can also just kind of wing it and, and do whatever, you know, creatively comes to you. Um, I will be right back. I'm going to go find a reference photo of the panel that I want to make and I'll post it on screen soon. All right, I found uh, the panel I want to reference. This is, I believe, from Griffin at Bush Gardens. Um, so I'm going to leave that on screen. I'm going to put this over here on my second monitor uh, to reference it. Um, if you don't have a second monitor, I'm sorry, you'll have to like tab back and forth. But uh, having this reference really helps like lay out the panel. So anyways, uh, you're going to choose or go to the scenery tab, choose, obviously, um, find the package in your park. 
and you're gonna pick which panel you want to use. Now, I found that particularly for this station and whatnot, uh, the medium size panel worked best, and because it has that panel view right in the middle, we're gonna use layout one. Um, you can see that the panels have different layouts, and there's even a no layout version uh, for each of them. Um, all of the colors are customizable. So we're going to add this object. Now you're gonna wanna place it somewhat near your station, right there. Now before you, you're not actually gonna put it in its final place yet. Um, we're just gonna put it uh, on flat ground. We're not gonna twist it or modify it. Um, and you'll see why in a second. And then at the very end, we're gonna move the whole completed custom panel up to the station. Uh, next, uh, you can do this at the end or from the start, I like doing it from the start, is I like to customize the panel. So if you double click on it, you'll get entity settings. Uh, you can give it a name if you want. I'll just call it, I don't know, dive main panel. Cool. Uh, you can customize the zones. Um, so for example, like we can change this to... I don't know, red, and it'll change that. So all these are like different sections you, you can recolor uh, if you want. You can choose to hide the audio panel. Um, when you click that, it won't immediately make it disappear, but it will disappear during uh, runtime. Um, and all of the options that we're going to be going over, if you hold your cursor over it, it should, most of them have like a tooltip to kind of tell you like what's going on with that. Uh, in our case though, I do not want to hide the audio panel. And then all of the panels have three different texture options. There's brushed metal, which looks kind of like this or like this. It's just kind of like a nice modern aluminum. Uh, there's bumpy painted metal, which actually we're going to have to start up because they don't apply until you actually go into the uh, the play mode. So this is like a bumpy metal, and then there's a rusty metal. Now the rusty metal for main panels looks slightly different than the rusty for the smaller panels. So back to building the panel. Uh, I want a modern, so I'm just gonna leave it as brush metal. Uh, if you hover over, you'll get more tooltips on like what color the panel should be for each of these textures. Like for example, uh, rusty needs to be white. Uh, bumpy doesn't really look good with white. It looks better with like darker colors. Uh, you can experiment for yourself. Once I start building the panel, I'm going to put a timer on screen too, uh, so you can see how much time it takes to actually build up the panel, and I'll speed up any slow and repetitive parts. So now that we've customized our panel, uh, we're going to pick a column of operators to start with, which by the way, if you didn't already know, operators, quote unquote, are just any human interactable buttons, switches, etc. So I'm going to start with the keys on the left side as the first column and that'll help make putting the other buttons on the panel easier. So we're going to go find key, key switch, add object, click here, it puts it nearby. Um, now for the main panels, we're going to double click this. Uh, the rotation that this needs to be set at is negative 70. The tricky part here is for the first column, we're going to have to manually uh, put them into place. So I'm just going to kind of get this over here. All right, so we got our first one. Uh, I'm just gonna copy this. I'm gonna move it down. Now here's where we can get kind of clever with this, is we can take the X of this button, uh, this key and apply it to this so it's perfectly in line vertically. All we have to do now is uh, the horizontal, or the, sorry, perfectly in line horizontally. Now we just gotta get this one good vertically. Now uh, we're going to move on to the next column and here's where the it gets kind of easy. So on the next column we have that control uh, pilot light. So we're going to find pilot light, we're going to add it in, double click this, set the rotation to negative 70, and we're going to take the Y and the X of this and apply it to this. and it'll perfectly put it on that row. All we have to do is slide it over to where we want, like right there, and it'll be perfectly flush with the panel based on all the hard work we did at the beginning. 
So uh, we're just going to repeat that for all the operators on this column. So the next one down is a shielded push button. And then now we can take the X of this one, the horizontal that is, apply it, and it's perfectly in line. And then here, since we have like a duplicate of this button uh, right over, we can actually just copy it and slide it over. So, uh, yeah, you know, it, it seems complicated at first, but you know, with this alignment technique, it doesn't really take that uh, long. Cool! That's basically the outline. Um, oh, you know what? We have the uh, these over here, too. This is a little bit extra. Alright, cool. Now we're done. So, now we're gonna go over uh, customizing the operators themselves. So, we'll start with this key up here. Now this one says control power. Um, now you don't have to give them names, but uh, I recommend giving them all names because if you accidentally set something wrong in the settings down here, uh, it will actually warn you in game with like what's wrong. And if you don't give it a name, it'll just say key switch has an issue. If you give it a name, it'll actually tell you the name of the operator that's having an issue. So that'll help you with, with debugging down the line. Cool. Uh, you can try to make the background match the green. I'm just going to leave them as white. Uh, now for switches, switches are probably the most complicated operator. Uh, now control panel, I honestly, I actually kind of like working up or down up uh, with my settings here. So uh, starting at the bottom, we have placard options. That's going to choose what actually the, uh, the placard is going to show during runtime. So we're going to switch this to control power. And if we go up a little bit, um, we have the operator mode. So this is like how it behaves during runtime. Uh, for control power, since it's not going to really change, we're going to leave it as static. Uh, do we want to attach it to a transfer stack? No, it's on the main panel. Uh, block location, uh, this can remain none for static, but any other mode uh, requires the block location to be set. Um, I mean, we can just set it to station too if we, we want to be clean about it. Um, in static mode, you can choose to have the key hidden. Um, in this case, we actually want it in the key slot. Uh, and then for static modes, it's going to put the angle of the key to start angle. So instead of it being back 45 degrees, we actually want it forward 45 degrees. And to kind of see what that looks like real quick in game, you can see that the the placard was set, so the key was put to 45, and the key is in. So that's gonna, that's kind of how it behaves during, uh, during runtime. Uh, we'll move on to this key. This one says maintenance, so we'll switch that to maintenance. Um, now this one we actually can have animate if we want. Um, like let's say we want it to move from off to enable when full manual mode is activated. So we'll select full manual mode, turn off static. Um, it it doesn't break, but don't have you can only have one of these options chosen at a time. Now for any uh, non-static mode, we do have to set the block. Um, in this case, the block can be anything. Um, but if you hover over, it'll tell you like uh, what block to set, um, what it does, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I recommend hovering and kind of reading. Uh, about all the different modes. Uh, this doesn't matter because it's static mode only. And the angle is important. Uh, we, Like we said, we wanted it to start uh, at off, which would be straight up. So we're going to say that's zero. And then when it goes to full manual mode, we want it to animate over 45 degrees. So that one's done. Moving on to the next one.
And then this last key is transfer mode. I don't really want this particular key to say transfer mode. So let's actually change this to running lights just to, I don't know, show it off. So we'll change that to running lights. Now for running lights, um, the placard, the best mode for that is night lights. Um, when the lights turn on at night, it will automatically animate from off to on. Uh, so we do need to say off is at negative 45 and on is at zero. Um, actually, no. We need to set the full range. So it's going to go off, which is negative 45 degrees, and then emergency would be plus 45. Like that. Oh, and remember to set the block. Cool. That one's done. Uh, that's pretty much all the preferences for all the buttons. Um, I can't really see the two in the bottom right, so I just opted to go with uh, block reset and transports. Um, sometimes if you can't see something, you just gotta use your imagination to fill it in. Uh, the piece de resistance to this panel will be the panel view. Let's see if we can find it. There it is. Again, we're gonna set this to negative 70. And unfortunately, we're going to have to manually bring this one in. Not too terribly hard, though. Eh, that looks good enough. And the panel view is a little bit different. If you choose to use the panel view, um, you have there is no static mode. You have to go into settings, so make sure you do that. Uh, you can change the block colors. That's what will display uh, in the block diagram here, it'll kind of split up all your blocks uh, and show the status of them. It also shows you harness and gate status in the station. Uh, so the first block, it has to be the first station in your ride. Uh, the second block, you know, just blocks two through whatever are going to be your ride in order. You can do it out of order, it just wouldn't make sense. Uh, so pre-drop, mid-course breaker run ready breaks then transfer track now if you had like an unload station or something you're gonna want to put that as the the last block all right uh so now here's the important part we're gonna run before we move it so we're gonna run the simulation and we're gonna see if we get any error messages now it looks like we got one and it says dave uh sorry dive main dispatch one so that would be this button right here block parameter required for any non-static mode so i guarantee you you will make this mistake uh, when you build your panel the first time you'll forget to set a block uh, so we're going to go in here and yep we have it in dispatch mode but we forgot to set the block location uh, so we're going to set that to station try it again it should make the error message go away and it did cool so now we're just going to double check uh that everything is set to what we want it to be based on our reference image. So we got control power, it's on. Uh, power on is blinking, that's wrong. We want that to be solid. Uh, maintenance isn't off, which is good. Acknowledge is blinking, I don't think we want that either. Um, operation mode is in auto. Uh, platform just worked automatically, it animated, that's good. So you kind of want to open up, make sure that, you know, like the e-stop, that worked, e-stop reset worked, uh, the running lights changed to emergency, so that works. So you just want to kind of go and stress test your panel to make sure that everything's animating correctly. Um, it should as long as you set all the settings right. So we're going to go back, we're going to see what's going on here. So static mode uses this setting, which says how you want the light to behave. Two means blink. We actually want one for static. And then for this one, we want it to not blink. Actually, maybe we'll have it blink when it's in full auto mode. Yeah, that'll be cool. Okay, so when you're done with your panel, 
we're gonna take the whole thing, select it, make sure you're not like selecting other things, you know, kind of come top down on it, select everything. You're gonna press Control C to copy it, and then under the scenery tab, uh, do click paste. We're gonna go over here to where we want it, click paste, and it'll paste it in. Hit select modify or the space bar. Actually, no, not that. Hit Actually, yes, that. Uh, kind of move it into place where you want it. And then uh, you can also use the rotate tool to rotate it like this. So if I want it a little bit more like that, uh, maybe slide it over this way a little bit, maybe a bit this way, maybe bring it down a little bit. Cool. That's basically it. So if we go in here, Looks good. Sick. Uh, so I would play around with it for a little bit. Again, make sure everything's working. And then once you're absolutely sure that this is its final location, all the buttons are correct and everything, you can go over here to your original and delete it. Um, the reason you want to keep your original around until you're absolutely sure that it's good is because if you're like, oh, I, I want to make a quick change or whatever, or I want to move a button around, or maybe I want to change this to a switch, uh, putting a switch in here now is going to be a huge pain because, you know, we can we can copy in the values and stuff like that and maybe get it to align, but if you want it to, like, move stuff around, it's going to be all off axi now, uh, which is no fun, so don't do that. All right, this next section will go over how to make custom sub panels uh, for your ride. Um, it's pretty much the same as making the main panel. Uh, the only difference is that you'll select which panel you want. Like, we'll go with this. You know, you'll set the settings, blah, blah, blah. You'll pick your operators. But for these vertical ones, you don't need to set the rotation. And also, if you take the position data of the box itself and apply it to the button, it will perfectly align it on the panel. So you can just go ahead and drag the, uh, the X and the Y, and it'll be aligned already. Uh, and it's a little bit easier to make these panels because of that. And then again, when you're done with your panel, you will select everything, click paste, put it where you want it, maybe use a little rotate, and that's pretty much it. Uh, the next thing we're going to go over is how to, like, if we actually wanted this to stay here, um, how to have it attached to the switch track. Because if we run it right now, if we were to move the switch track, you'll see that the one set up properly move, but this one set up improperly does not move, and we don't want that. For all of these items, we're going to do three things. We're going to set the name of the object to the transfer table's name, not the transfer track, the transfer table. And I named mine aptly transfer table. Then we're going to make sure that the block is set to any block on the ride. Uh, just for nomenclature, I put it as the actual transfer track, but it can be any block. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters about the table is the name here. Uh, and then lastly, we're going to say attached to transfer track. We're going to repeat that for all of the objects on this panel. And now when we run it, it should move with it. And it does. Sweet. All right, so this next part is going to go over, I just kind of want to showcase some bonus items. Um, there is this kind of tower stack light. Um, again, it's scripted. You can set the settings. 
Um, you can even set the e-stop sound it makes. Uh, that's it. Kind of acts like a pilot light. So if you're familiar with the pilot light, it'll it'll act like that. Uh, we have a, a Nemo meter. Um, all it has is color settings, uh, but during play, it will actually spin to the wind speed, which is pretty cool. So if we go here, it's spinning. And if we change, I forget what the key is. There we go. If we change the wind, it will match the wind. Now, uh, NL slowly raises the wind speed, so it won't be instant, but if we give it a second here, you'll see it actually start to spin up. So that's kind of cool. Uh, other things. Uh, there's this unscripted power lockout that you can put on the side of the panel. Um, there are these uh, little like caution zones that you can put for like, you know, operator stations to tell them where to stand. Um, you have cable runners. Now, the cool thing with these cable runners is if you have some boxes connected to your ride, uh, I would place the boxes first, and then you would put down the cable runner. If you take the position of the box and apply it to the cable runner, it will perfectly align it with the box if you want. And the cable runners also have uh, texture options and can also be attached to transfer tracks, as well as the panels and stuff. Um, if you want to get super detailed with your panels, I also included these panel labels. Uh, so you can put these on your panels, like I can make this one say electricity, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of cool. Uh, that's pretty much it for that. Uh, the only remaining thing that I'd like to go over is how to make a custom placard. Because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people making suggestions for the placard or they want to make their own for whatever reason. Um, now you can just simply go into the files, go to textures, go to placards, and like find one that you don't like, modify it, and just use that one. That's cool. Um, but if you actually want to ha like make your own, what I recommend doing is first actually coming to this placard section, uh, make a copy of one, and rename it, obviously, to something uh, that you'll need later. So this one, I'm just gonna call it Panic. Open it up in your favorite photo editing software and uh, keep the size. Uh, basically, you can get rid of, you know, that layer or whatever. And the goal here is to just make it completely white. Um, you don't want to make it any other color uh, because the color settings in game are just going to overwrite it anyway. So we're going to start with a black background. Um, I recommend Arial for the font. And let's change this to I don't know, 10 millimeters, roughly correct. Oh, I'm going to change the color. <laughs> color to black. So the text has to be black as well. Again, the in game settings will change that color if you choose. Uh, I think five millimeters or six millimeters in size is roughly good. Um, usually panels, placards, I'm sorry, usually placards are all uppercase. Um, but you can obviously do whatever you want. All right, we got our placard. We're going to save that back to our copied image. Next, we're going to, you're going to, Go to whatever operator you want to add the placard to. Um, I guess I'll do it to this one, the pilot light. Go to scenery. With it selected, hit the editor. Go to materials first, and you're going to go to the placard and hit edit. Under here, you're going to go to textures, setup, and at the very bottom, and this is important, the order is important, at the very bottom, put in placards, 
backslash and then your placard name. So mine was placard panic.png. Hit OK, hit save, close that out. The last thing you're going to do is go to scripts and you'll see a bunch of parameters here on the right uh, with a bunch of placard numbers. The last one here ends with placard 18. So we're going to add a placard by naming it placard 19. The type will be boolean or bool. The label, you can. this is whatever you want, so I'm just going to do panic. Um, description doesn't really matter, and leave default value off. Hit OK, hit save. The last step is with this selected, hit reload. Otherwise, it won't show up uh, in your settings once you click on it. So once you reload it, double click on it. And now down here at the bottom, you have panic. So if we save that, go into here. It should say panic. Sweet. And again, uh, you know, as long as you made it black and white, you should be able to change the placard background and placard text. So that pretty much wraps up the tutorial and kind of showcase of my uh, panels and operators pack. I really hope you enjoy it. Um, please uh, post in the uh, No Limits Discord or around your panels. I'd love to see them. I'd love to see your creativity uh, with the pack. Um, if you have any suggestions, please post those as well. Um, I'll be making updates here and there to add uh, placards I think are good or operators. Um, I plan to add a couple other oddball things as well to the pack, uh, but that's just for the future. Uh, but for now, I'm going to sign off and uh, see you guys later. Bye.